living in a what's fast becoming a lawless culture. I've been hollering about it for years. Whether anyone is listening, I know this. We have a chance here. I mean, the future is bright, <clears throat> even amongst all this vitriol and hatred and political wrangling and these cases you see come up, law enforcement, our culture just spinning downward, the removal of God, it's disheartening. And sometimes it uh, has such an effect on you, you want to just throw up your hands and say, what's the use? Just remember this little section of scripture. Brothers, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, the ones who die. Or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Most of the time there's a lot of grieving, especially when the unsaved, some of their loved ones have passed on. A lot of grief because in their mind, if there's no hope in the resurrection, whoever it is that died, you say, well, that's, that's it, they're gone. We believe that Jesus died and rose again there's the gospel. It's the only hope we have. And rose again. His body came forth from the casket, the tomb. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. When Jesus returns, the Bible says it over and over and over. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, if you haven't died yet, when he comes, say in the next five minutes, who are left to the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Something's going to happen to the ones who have fallen asleep before something happens to the ones who are still alive when he comes. The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The tombs begin to give up, and the bodies are coming out. After that, if you're alive when he comes, you haven't died yet, we who are still alive or who are left will be caught up with them, the ones whose bodies have come from the tomb, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. For a non-Christian person, that would seem like sheer insanity. Many would scoff at that and say, you mean to tell me you, you think there's gonna be a wild scene like that take place on planet Earth? That's what this says. Destruction will come up on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. I'm giving you things to think about when you feel like you look at your culture and your government and all of the vitriol and hatred and the, the crap that comes out of all of it. I'm just giving you a view, a biblical view of how you should view it. You brothers are not in darkness for the saved and the ones of you who are living a godly life in Christ Jesus. You have heard the story of Jesus. You believed it. You repented. You confessed Jesus as Lord when you became aware of him dying for your sins and guaranteeing you you can be raised from the dead. You said, well, if that's what's at stake, he will be my Lord. 
my master from this day forth. You go to a pool of water, you die to sin, you're buried, the old you and the new you comes forth, sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. And here you are on planet Earth in the midst of a lot of chaos, hatred, vitriol, and sin. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you're doing. That's what I'm trying to do for you today. I'm encouraging you and I'm building you up to let you know, oh, he's coming. Be ready. <laughs>